to all you gardeners and growers out there. Special shout out to my Garden State Growers. I'm Eric, this is Garden State Growing. Today, I wanna to talk to you about uh, high intensity garden. And that is a method of basically broadcasting a lot of seeds in a small area and not thinning them out after they grow and uh, just having some fun with it. And in my opinion, there are some vegetables you can do this with very successfully. And then there's some that you can't. Uh, so I'm going to show you some examples. The video that you're about to see, I actually shot yesterday, and uh, it was a brutal day. It, it was like 65 one minute, and then felt like it dropped down to 30 the next. It would rain for five seconds, and then it would hail for a little bit, and then it went back to raining for a little bit, and then the sun would come out, and it would be bright and shiny again, and then it would start all over again. So that's the video that you're about to see. Uh, I have a, a lot to do and I'm not going to bring you along for it because I mean if you want to see me uh, fill up my raised garden bed there's a video for that. If you want to see me put up a hoop house there's a video for that. Uh, so you can go check out those videos. Uh, maybe I'll put a link in, in the description below. If not just search my channel. Um, but the first one I want to show you is now if you go to my potato video or planting in layers video this is what I was talking about with my radishes now right above where I planted all my potatoes my radishes are sprouting right up you know from the ground and I just broadcast this seed out and without too much care uh, where they landed as long as they were in my row you see they even came up underneath this big stick uh, radishes don't care. They will grow up right next to each other. They will push each other out of the way and you'll, you you could just pick up a whole bunch of them at once. And so that's what I do with my radishes. And as you see, they're popping, they're thriving. Even though it's this cold outside, the radishes don't really care. So let me bring you over here. I'll show you the second vegetable that I high intensity plant. And that is my bunching onions. My bunching onions will grow right on top of each other. They really do not care. That's how I seeded them. That's how I planted them. I planted about 15, 20 in each cell and then just planted the plugs right here in the garden. But these, these are my bulbing onions. And as you can tell, they're much thinner because I spaced them out like four inches apart in order to allow room for the onions to grow a nice bulb. These would not tolerate high intensity farming. So the other vegetables that do really well, uh, besides radishes and onions, uh, is gonna be my lettuces. That's how I like to grow my lettuces. I know people space them out to get like the perfect heads. I really don't care. I high intensity, you know, plant them. I let them grow on top of each other. I don't have to mulch them because their shade will shade out all the weeds that try to come up, at least most of them that try to come up. Uh, you know underneath the lettuces and stuff like that But I just let them go because I, I pick mine and I use it as leaf lettuce regardless of whether it's a head lettuce or not I'm gonna talk more about that uh, So I'm gonna stop rambling right now, and I'm gonna send you over to that video and We're gonna use a transporter because today. I've got some magic and Welcome back to Garden State Growing. My name is Eric, and today I've got a lot of stuff to do. I've got to get the rest of that raised bed filled with the mushroom compost. I've got to get hoop houses put up here, and then we're going to go and get some seedlings that I have, and we're going to start planting them in the raised beds. Uh, and I'm also going to direct sow. I'll bring you along. I'll show you why I made the decisions that I made and what to plant where. But uh, for now, I'm not going to bore you with filling a raised bed because I have videos on making raised beds, how to fill them, what to fill them with, how to amend the soil, and how to put up hoop houses. So today, I'm just going to use my magic. And so here we go. I'm going to use my magic. It's so much easier than doing wheelbarrow by wheelbarrow. Ignore that right there and just let me have fun.
sorry for the noise, guys. I just wanted to give you a picture of my son mowing the lawn. He's such a great kid. He came out here. He said, Dad, do you want me to mow the lawn? Do you want me to break out the weed whacker and take care of this stuff while you're doing your gardening? I said, hell yeah, that would be awesome, dude. Thanks for doing that. I knew he was going to be a great kid since the day he was born. That's why I named him Manuel. And his middle name? Labor. Just kidding. His name is Tyler, and I love him, and he is a great kid. Thank you so much, Tyler, for coming out and helping Dad. I love you, buddy. All right, guys, it's starting to rain out here. Do you know why it's starting to rain out here? Because before when I was out here, it was 65 degrees. I had pants on, and I was sweating my junk off. So I decided to go inside and put on a pair of shorts. As soon as I came outside, the clouds came out. It got cold. The wind came out. That's it. So it's because I put shorts on. All right, everyone. I'm hiding underneath my pine tree because now it's raining really hard and I don't like it. And it's gotten really cold and I'm soaking wet. So unfortunately, the garden project is either going to have to wait till later on today um, or uh, another day, which kind of sucks. And you might have be asking, well, why didn't I look at the weather report? I did. It said it was going to be 64 and sunny by 12 o'clock today and now it is crazy cloudy and rainy um so mr weatherman you've lost all credibility with me you lost all credibility with me a long time ago you know what you're wrong 60 percent of the time and if i had a job where i was allowed to be wrong 60 percent of the time i'd be a freaking millionaire right now so and hoops hey what happened no, that's not right. I must be running out of magic. Let me try it again. All right, that's better. Oh my God, there for a second I thought I ran out of magic. Thank God I didn't. Uh, I, I know I'm running low, so I've been having this problem with my right foot all morning. Let me see if I can fix that. I'll show you. Oh yeah, that's the problem. Ready? All right, yeah, that's much better. Okay, but I think I'm out of magic for today. So I guess I'm going to have to put the plants in the ground with my hands and I guess I'm going to have to bring it along. So let's do that now. Oh, hell no. It just started lightning and thundering out here. Uh, I mean, I'll plant in the rain, but I ain't planting in this. So we're going to have to come back to this later. Look at that angry sky. See, that's what happens when I overuse magic. If I would have just stopped at the hoops, I would have been fine, but I had to do the sock. Okay, holy moly cannoli. Wow, I'm getting a break in the weather now. It uh, it was actually hailing out. Like it, the storm rolled in so quick, so fast, it blew all my seed packets away. That's why I got tucked in my little kangaroo pouch. Uh, but I'm going to get these in here. Uh, these are my lettuces that I'm gonna plant right here. Uh, I'm not too concerned. They uh, are the very hardy in uh, colder temperatures and are nice. Uh, lately, besides freak weather, have been in their 40s. Uh, with the hoop house, they should be fine. I'm going to take a gamble on them. Maybe I can wait a week or two, but I want to get these into the ground now, so I'm going to. And I'm just going to use this stick, and I'm going to press it into the ground, and that's just going to give me a line, a nice straight line. But you're going to see the way I plant my lettuces. I, uh, I do high intensity with my lettuces. Even if it's a head lettuce, uh, I don't care because I'm not really going to let it go until it heads. I'm just going to pick it as if it was a leaf lettuce and come out here and uh, pick and let grow. That's going to be my price head. Now I do have more seeds for prize head. I'm just going to plant this here to see how it grows and then I'm going to sow seeds down on that end. The reason why I'm putting uh, the plants in this end over here uh, is because I like where the sun is coming right now. I don't want bigger plants to shade out my smaller plants. So I'm going to put my smaller plants down here. I have purple, ruffles, basil. You know what? I'm not going to plant them. They're just way too tiny. Hansen improved crisp head these look really good i grow them close together i let them shade out all the weeds i don't like how low they are 
I mean, that's basically it. All right, all right so I'm going to plant the rest of these. I'll show you when I sell them. All righty, y'all. I have uh, all the lettuces that I did have planted. I'm not used to starting lettuces inside. Normally, I just uh, uh, direct sow like I'm going to do next, but... I was doing an experiment with this tray. If you watch my seed video, uh, when I planted these in here, I was testing this tray out. And uh, my conclusion is that I absolutely hate it. I had to tear it apart, cut it apart with a razor knife in order to get these things out. Of it, 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 it was terrible. I, uh, I don't know if... Uh, how well these are going to do, to be honest with you, uh, because of that. So I am just going to go ahead. I'm going to direct sow the rest of my rows. Let me move this garbage out of the way. Now, let's see. I have Italian dandelion here, so I might as well get my seed pack of Italian dandelion and just run with it. There you go. So for direct sowing, I'm... Literally just going to take my seed pack and start sprinkling them. I'm not even going to worry about spacing really that much because I'm doing high intensity gardening. All right, that's good. I'm just going to go cover these up a little bit. It's garbage. All right, that's it. No big deal. I'll show you another row. Take my stick. And a couple inches away from that other row, I'm going to make a line. That's basically it. Let me pick one out. Now, I like to go... You know, we have a lot of different seeds. I have some that are red, some that are purple, some that are green. I like to just go like green, a couple rows of red, or maybe green red. You know, it, it just looks pretty. There's really no reason for it other than I like the way it looks when it grows. Now, I have a lot of seeds here for this ruby red. So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to plant two rows of this. side when I go over there there's my line this here just so I know where I have the line on this side. All right. I'm telling you, I'm not even planning on fitting these. This is where my next line is going to be. And that's it. I'm going to do the rest of this bed and then I'll bring it back and I'll show you a couple special ones that I'm planting. Just used my stick to make a line, carved a little ditch, half an inch deep, that's it. And I just took my seeds and I broadcast them up and down uh, without any care whatsoever about spacing. Uh, like I said, this is high intensity gardening and uh, I'm going to pack this lettuce on top of each other 
And then when I want salads, I'm just gonna come out here and I'm just leaf by leaf by leaf, I'm gonna pick off each plant and make myself a, a great mixed salad. Uh, I did plant some other things, let me show you, that were not lettuces. I have the Italian dandelion, which is a lettuce, but I have uh, the Tokyo Bacana, which is a mustard, okay? I did the ruby red leaf lettuce, the tatsoi mustard. I did a red Malabar spinach down at that end. Tangle leaf lettuce. Now this is a really special one. This is strawberry spinach. I hope you can see that. This is a, it's, it's a spinach, but it's, it's more like a substitute for spinach. Uh, but it is in the spinach family and it does come with these luscious little berries on it. They're a little sour, they're a little tart, they're not really that sweet, but they, they make a great addition to any salad that you're gonna make. So not only do you get a spinach type uh, leaf, but you also get the berries along with it. And let me tell you, these seeds were microscopic. They came in a little tiny plastic bag in here and I, I practically needed a microscope to broadcast them into the ditch. I'll, we'll see how I did. So I got the uh, prize head leaf lettuce, the Hansen Improved Crisp, the Cimarron, Cimarron lettuce, red sails, bronze mignonette, another one, the red giant, the iceberg, now remember, I'm planting head lettuce, but I don't plan to let these go to head. I'm gonna treat it as if it's a leaf lettuce, and I'm just gonna come up and pick leaves off of it whenever I want. Uh, the red leaf sorrel. Now the red leaf sorrel, it's not a spinach, but it's a good warm weather spinach substitute. Uh, it does really well. The, the, the leaves can be uh, slightly bitter, but it's still a delicious um, spinach substitute. I got the Super Red Romaine, the Mizuna Mustard. This is a mustard green, not really a lettuce. The Black Seeded Simpson, a Ruby Red Leaf, the Freezy Endive, the Broadleaf Endive, the Broadleaf Batavian, uh, I didn't plant the salad bowl mix because I got so much mix as it is. Uh, there are two plants. There was actually four plants that I wanted to plant today. But when the wind picked up, it blew away two of my seed packets. My love leads, uh, bleeds amaranth. And I forget what the other one was, but they, I don't know where they went. So they're gone. So there are two more plants that I'm going to plant that um, are not lettuces. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to plant. All right. So the one I want to plant... And this is the purple Vienna kohlrabi. This is, I love kohlrabi, not just for the bulb. Um, now the purple bulb, when you peel it, it's white underneath anyway, uh, just like the white um, kohlrabi. But it's a mix of like, uh, I would say, it's got like the bite and texture of an apple, but it's definitely not sweet. It sometimes has a little tiny bit of a peppery taste to it. It can be substituted for mashed potatoes or cabbage and coleslaw. You can make a coleslaw out of it. I'll definitely, when this grows and I harvest, I'll show you how I use it. But the greens on this, so many people I know, they chop the greens off and they just go ahead and throw it away. These are some of the most fantastic greens. I guess the closest comparison to it would be the, um, would be collard greens. But these have such an amazing flavor to them, and they have a, a, a beautiful bite to them. They're a little bit tougher, so you have to cook them a little bit longer than collard greens. Uh, but I love it. It's got an amazing bite to it, an amazing flavor to it. So I'm not going to just broadcast these willy-nilly like I did with the lettuce. Uh, they want a good 10 inches in between uh, the plants, but what I am going to do is I'm going to just drop one every couple inches. 
and let them germinate. It only takes a couple days, three or four days for these to germinate. Okay, I'm gonna file that over. Press it down a little bit. And I'm gonna continue down this row and I'm gonna have kohlrabi. Now, after these sprout, I'm definitely gonna come back and I'm gonna thin these out. I'm not gonna thin out my lettuces as they get bigger, but I am gonna thin these out because if they don't have the correct amount of spacing between them, uh, they're not gonna grow right, they're not gonna be harvestable, and they're not gonna bulb right. So as these come up, as these germinate, I'm gonna see which ones do good, which ones aren't, and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna thin these out. Now for the last two plants that I'm planting, this one is the purple orach. It's known as mountain spinach. Uh, the thing is, is these plants can get anywhere up to three to six feet tall. That's why I'm all the way down at the bottom end of my second bed here because I don't want this to shadow out all the rest of the plants that I have. So I'm putting my tallest ones down here. And again, these need a little bit of spacing, but with them, you want to plant them heavy and then come back and definitely thin these out. Uh, they want you to thin them out first to three inches and then the six. So what I'm going to do is roughly I'm going to create myself a little square here because I don't want to do a full section of this. So I cut myself out of the square and that's it. I'm just going to do these two, eh, maybe these three rows. And then I'm going to come and thin them out. And what's great about this is when you thin them out, just like your lettuces, um, or anything else you can eat them when you thin them out. So don't just thin them out and throw them away Thin them out and put them in a salad Now these seeds are beautiful. They've got like a, a grayish purple tinge to them, which is really nice So they would be so, so small they would be difficult to space them out correctly so it's just so much easier just to lay them on thick and then come back and thin them out later so that's it for those all right guys last but not least i found this little tomato plant growing in the middle of my lettuce trays chance can you please move sweetie come here come on chance okay so I must have dropped the tomato seed in the middle of my tray when I was doing my lettuce. I don't know how I did that, but I must have did that. So I'm going to find a little spot down here and I'm going to put him in. Now remember, with tomatoes, you want to bury up the stem because these little hairs on it are going to grow roots. So I'm going to bury this a little bit deep. I'm not really going to pull any out. And I'll tell you, it's still too cold for tomatoes. But since this is like a mystery tomato that I don't even know what it is, I'm going to throw it in here. If it lives, it lives. If it dies, whatever. I'll, I'll plant other stuff. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I you know, taught you something a little bit about planting lettuce, that it's okay to overcrowd them. It's okay to do a high intensity uh, gardening, just like I did with my radishes when I just broadcast them out. And I'm telling you, if I didn't care about it, uh, lettuce identification, all right, the fire engine just rang its bell. That means it's six o'clock. It's time to go inside. I'm done with this for the day. Uh, the only thing I have to do now is put plastic over these two beds to try to protect them a little bit from the chill. Uh, if you like this video, if you like this content, please hit that like button. Share this with your family and friends. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a great time and I'll see you on the next episode.